Welcome guys to another Code Ass Lost Story video. If you're someone who is starting out of the game or playing it for a while and curious to know exactly which are the best nightmare frames in the game, well, stay tuned because we're going to go over them today in this video. And I know there's already a guide out there that did its own tier list. However, I don't agree with a lot of the picks and you're going to see that in this video. A couple of disclaimers before we begin. Obviously, it's a tier list of all the best nightmare frames in Code Ass Lost Stories. Not in the anime, so if you're wondering why certain things are in certain locations, remember it's just a game and not the anime. And number two, I'm going to be taking into account both the melee and the range weapon of any given Nightmare Frame. And once more Nightmare Frames come out, I will make future tier lists to rank those. Before we actually start going through each Nightmare Frame, let's go over the categories real quick and what I decided to come up with. Alright, so first we have Windmore. Windmore are Nightmare Frames that are really good but they're not really needed. And so therefore, they go into the Windmore category. When we actually get to that point, you'll see what I mean. Next we have is the SS rank. These are the best Nightmare Frames in the game. No debate. And if you have a collection of these, you're probably winning most of the challenges. S rank, I didn't put a description bike. I couldn't think of what to put there, but these are Nightmare Frames that are really good, but there are Nightmare Frames that do the same thing as these that are even better. That would be in the SS rank. But still, these are very powerful Nightmare Frames. If you got some of these, definitely use them if you've got room on your team. Next we have is the A rank. This is the solid Nightmare Frame. These are ones that are, again, they're not the best of the best. But if you've got a collection of these on your team, you've got a pretty powerful team. Because there are some Nightmare Frames out there that are not the strongest out there. But they do a lot of damage. The next category we have is the B, which are good when you start. When you first start playing Lost Stories, you're going to summon a lot of three rank rank three characters who come with their own nightmare frames and many of them are pretty good early on in the game but as you'll find out there are many better ones to choose from so these nightmare frames are good when you start but once you get more nightmare frames as the game progresses you'll stop using them next we have the c rank which is niche use only this is a category for nightmare frames that aren't really good but they are good in one instance so they're not garbage for one time use only. But generally speaking, these are not good nightmare frames. And then finally, garbage. Don't use these. These are the worst nightmare frames in the game for many different reasons. Often they're way too expensive, there's better options available, or the stats are suck. So, and now let's start going through the nightmare frames. The first one we have is Toto's Borai Kai. And I put this in the B rank. You know, when you first get it, you'll be using it a lot. It's got good defensive ability. The attack power is not terrible. And it boosts the other JLF members when you use a special ability. So it's really good, but there are definitely better Nightmare Frames that you'll get later on that do what it does, but again, better. I will say though, if you are going to run a JLF team, it's not, it's actually worth using maybe one in a JLF uh, based team. But generally speaking, besides that, you won't be using this Nightmare Frame once you get better ones. Next one we have is the Borai Kai, and this is the standard one used by everyone else in episode uh, stage 10. I don't know why I said episode, but stage 10. And it is garbage. Why? Well, let's put it like this. The stats and abilities are the exact same as the Borai Kai that Toto has. But the reason why it is so low ranked is because you only get it for free when you reach, I believe it's rank 20. And so by the time you get there, you already have better Nightmare Frames. So I don't see why you'd ever want to use this. In fact, you'll probably end up summoning multiple Totos and getting multiple Borai Kais. So why would you ever need this one? I feel like they only put it in the game because it was in the show. But if you eliminate that one part of it, I don't know why you ever would use this. So it's garbage. Is it actually bad? No, but the circumstances behind it are. So... It's garbage. Next we have is the Borai Dizo, and I'm going to put this as a win more. This is a nightmare frame you can only get through your own money in the store. Is it good? Absolutely. It's got pretty good range power, and it's got a good special ability. But there are better nightmare frames in the game that you can get through the gacha summon, or in some cases, straight out free. And maybe early on when the game came out, this was a good one, good nightmare frame to pick up because there weren't a lot of options. But nowadays, I no. It's, it's not that great. Comparatively, it, I mean, it, it will help you out, I guess, but this is definitely a win more nightmare frame. And that's what I got to say about that one. Uh, next, we have a standard Borai. Garbage. 
This thing is, ugh, I don't know what to say about it, man. The attack and like both versions, by the way, the range of melee, the abilities are okay. They they, they kind of work, but the Sutherland's better. Like both versions, both weapons of Sutherland are better than this. And given how easy it is to pick up a Sutherland, why would you ever use this instead? So yeah, it's garbage. It's cool within the game because Borais were part of the show, but no, crap. Next we have is Cornelius Gloucester. Easy SS ring for me. I love this thing. It's a powerful lance. It's got low cost, high attack, pretty good defense. You can use it with attackers and defenders. It also boosts, I believe, Obertanian forces when you use a special ability. So all around, it's very powerful. And again, doesn't cost you too much. If you want to boost a character that you need to special on, like, for example, Valetta, the healing unit, where she is a ranged, I'm sorry, a melee nightmare frame healer or pilot. You want to use her in something like this, a Lance Nightmare Frame. The, the, the low cost alone does it for me, and combined with Cornelia, which is one of the best units in the game, period, and you have a very powerful combination. So, yeah, the Gloucester, Cornelia's Gloucester, is definitely one of the best Nightmare Frames in the game, bar none. Next we have is Dalton's Gloucester. Easy A ring. When you first get this Nightmare Frame, you don't think much of it because you, it, it's got a long, it's got good range, but only goes in one direction. There's not much, there's no spread. So why would that be good? Well, when you start playing the game and you think it more like Tetris, which I think you're supposed to when you play this, you're going to find that having a Nightmare Frame with that incredible range comes up quite often. Not only can you have a powerful Annihilator wipe out Nightmare Frames that are in front of you, but you can also use a Nightmare Frame to heal other units or boost them, which comes up a lot in certain modes like in Arena. Overall, man, this thing is very powerful, and when you start realizing where you can use it, You'll be glad you upgraded it. I'll tell you that much for sure. The Lance Power is not terrible either. Although I don't use it, but from reading the stats on it, it's it's, it's actually pretty good too. It's, it costs more than, say, Guilford's, but damage is also obviously better. Overall, great Nightmare Frame. Absolutely use it all the time. Next we have is the Florence, and I don't know how I feel about this Nightmare Frame. This is going to be maybe controversial, but I'm going to put it in the B. It, I got it, and I have no interest in using it. I have a bunch. I've upgraded a couple of times. I just, I don't get it. It has 270 attack, which you think would be good. The special is not bad either, and it cloaks unit afterwards. But it kind of reminds me of Guilford's Gloucester, where it just doesn't block anybody. You know, like, yeah, it does a lot of damage, but, like, people keep going past me. So what's the point? I prefer to have a defensive nightmare frame backed by a lance as my main form of attack. I don't generally like using a, a, a Nair frame like this where it only has like one space to have it to attack. The only uh, ex exceptions are, say, like the the Sagetsu or the Gurren Mark II. But generally speaking, I just don't like Nair frames that do that. And this one is just not better than those. So to me, it's a B. If you get it, it's not bad. And of course, you got Monica, and the two of them go really well together. But besides that, I just... <laughs> I just don't like this Nightmare Frame. Maybe other people enjoy it more, but I, I... No. It's a B rank, and I honestly could put it lower. But we'll say B rank. It's good when you start out, but you'll find better ones as you play on. Next, we have the Galahad. Easy win more. What can I say about this Nightmare Frame? It's slow. It's got high attack. High stack, by the way. Highest defense. Insane cost to upgrade and, of course, to place. It's it's so slow and clunky. I, I don't know. Like it, it's win more because I don't think you need it to win at all. And if you actually do place it, you're probably still have so much cost you could have won in a using a better nightmare frame that was more efficient. Is it good? Sure, but man, it's not worth it half the time. And if you don't own this thing, don't feel bad. I, I recently got it in one of my accounts, and it's just so slow. I, I don't even like using it half the time. It's cool looking, but. It's not worth it. Next is the Glane, which, <laughs> unfortunately, I have to put in the same category. It's a win more. Is it good? Sure. Sure, it's pretty good. But only in certain instances, kind of like, well, not really the Galahad. It, it's it's, it's uh, kind of like the uh, the niche category, which I was kind of debating between putting, that, be, between putting this into the niche category, but I chose to put it in the win more. The thing about the, the Glane is that the range of it is just not great. It's a 2 by 3 and... The special is ridiculous. That's a, uh, I believe it's a 4x3. But it's a 2x3, and so how many enemies you can take off from that, it's not too many. And keep in mind, it doesn't even cover the sides like the Sarlin does. So if you put a unit like next to 
the Gwen, it won't even see it coming, and then it's probably going to get killed off that way. It's just not that great because it doesn't have that same range as, say, other Nightmare frames. But the special is very good, and it consistently, the, the gauge fills up on its own. So in certain, with certain units like, let's say, C2, it's very powerful, but only in certain instances. I think I've only run to maybe two or three times while playing where I really needed the Gwen. But generally speaking, 9% of the game, you only need a Nightmare frame. It's very expensive to place, and its additional range is not worth it. Next we have is the Gekka, solid. This Nightmare frame is good if you don't, let's say, have the Sagetsu or Toto's Borai, not Borai, Gekka, sorry, Toto's Gekka, or of course the Garden Mark II. Got solid defense, pretty good attack. I believe the special hits like two, three targets at once, or is it two targets at once, which is not terrible. It's good. If you don't have the Garden Mark II, this is a very good substitute for a defensive Nightmare Frame. And like I said before, I don't mind using a Nightmare Frame that attacks one space ahead, but I prefer it to be a defensive one because I can put like a Lance behind to back it up. That's just how I play this game. If you don't, let me know in the comment section below how you choose to play it. But that's what I tend to do with Nightmare Frames like this. So yeah, Gekka, pretty solid. Next we have is the Glasgow, and I'm putting this into the niche only category. Because this Nightmare Frame, let's face it, awful. Terrible range, terrible attack. But there are some times where you need to use it. And those cases are when you have to summon a bunch of, or I should say play, I keep saying summon, but I mean place. Place a bunch of pilots on the battlefield really quickly. And of course, you need to have these units cost as little as possible. And the glass doesn't cost much. So you can theoretically get a bunch of units out really quickly to either boost your cost or get another Nightmare Frame out, whatever the reason is. And so in those cases, the Glasgow is really good. Other than that, though, it's it's garbage. And it's it's pretty bad. But in those one instances, it's pretty good. That's why it's in the niche only. Next we have is the Glaston Knights. And yeah, it's a win more. Is it good? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's got powerful attack for a rain. I think it's one of the, still one of the highest. And it's got a Lance ability, a, a, a Lance weapon. The problem is, just like the Borai Diesel, you got to pay for it. So, again, early on in the game, maybe that makes sense, but there are so many better options now that are easy to get. You know, either free or, of course, be out of the gotcha summon. So, I like it. In a, in theory, I don't own it because I didn't pay for it. I wish I could. I wanted to actually purchase it for testing purposes, but I couldn't, and that's another video for another time. But basically, I mean, it's it's good. It's very good, but it's not worth it. Definitely a win more. Next, we have us a standard Gloucester. Also paid only, garbage. It is worse than this, and it costs half in the store. In my mind, if you're going to wail anyways, you might as well wail hard and get the better version, which is the Glass of Night. This thing is garbage. I guess you get it if you want to finish the collection. But other than that, I don't know why it's in the game. I mean, I guess because it was in a show like this Nightmare Frame, but still, I... Man, this Nightmare Frame is so bad. The, the power difference between the two is crazy. It's it's not good. Don't buy this. Waste of money. Next we have is Gilfred's Gloucester A rank. I'm sorry. That's a B. I, I can read. That's a B rank. It's got good attack. The special is not bad. I think it increases like the accuracy of your Nightmare Frame, which can come up. And I believe that the, the Lance version actually increases your cost by two when you use it, which is good with Gilfred because he also increases your cost when he t takes out units. So if you... Combine the two, that's a good combination, but that's very niche. And besides that, I don't know what else it'd be good with. The reason why I don't put it in the niche category, though, is because early on, it's not a bad Nightmare Frame to use. And I was using it, especially the Lance one, the Lance weapon, because it costs very little to play certain units. And even recently, I started using it with my Halloween Lelouch because I need him to cloak ground units in a situation where there weren't many options to place ranged units. So in stuff like that, it's actually pretty powerful because Lance Nightmare Frames that don't cost much are really important in this game. In fact, most of them don't. So if you get a good Lance, uh, definitely use those in cases like that. And that's why I like Nightmare Frame a lot for, the, for those situations. But generally speaking, it's not the best. And you'll definitely find Nightmare Frames. Find? <laughs> you don't find anything. You will pull Nightmare Frames that are just better than this. But if you have Guilford and you want to use Guilford a lot on your teams, I can see it worthwhile upgrading at least one version, one weapon of this Nightmare Frame. But yeah, it's a B rank. You'll find better ones. 
Next to the Gerd Mark II, easy SS rank. This thing is really good. Its special hits five enemies, which is crazy. It's actually one of the highest of all the melees. It's one of the highest defensive diaphragms in the game. Good attack power. It's broken with the original column you get in this game. I'm not sure what is more to say about this Nightmare Frame, but the Gurren Mark II is extremely powerful. If you've got an army of these things with defensive units you know, in them, good luck to the opponent because, my goodness, this thing is ridiculously powerful. Definitely one of the best in the game, no doubt. Next we have is Collins Borai, and I'll put it here. Also, fun fact, I didn't know this was actually a Borai when I first watched the show. I thought it was just a Glasgow with like a head covering. I didn't know it was actually a Borai, which is kind of interesting because that means the Black Knights got Borais before they got Borais in Stage 10. Kind of a funny little factoid there. But anyways, it's a pretty good Nightmare Frame. It has decent attack. The power ability has actually got good range for a, uh, well, for this type of Nightmare Frame. But uh, again, you will find better ones than this as you proceed in the game. It also comes with the uh, the Rank 3 Colin, which is pretty good if you want to combine her with, say, uh, Zero Lelouch, or I guess it's Lelouch Lamprey with Zero. I'm not sure how you would say that. But other than that, it's okay. It's not my favorite, but definitely good to use early on in the game. Notice how I have most of my attackers in the B rank. Yeah, I don't like attackers in the game with only one space ahead. Not a fan of those. Next we have is Colin Glasgow SS, Easy SS. This thing, how I put this, it when you upgrade it fully, it has no cost, which means you can use it with uh, Millie, Nagisa, Guilford, Suzaku, obviously Colin, the new Colin that came out, Jeremiah, the new Cornelia, whatever game you want that can boost your cost. This Nightmare Frame is just the best for that. It's incredible to me how it combos so nicely with the cost increasers, cost reducers, and then stuff in the middle, or it, it increase your cost as the game proceeds while they're placed on the battlefield. So good. The attack power is not terrible, and I gotta say, sometimes it does come up, and it, it does help you out. So, overall, one of the best in the game, and will be until they find our night, until our night frame comes out, that also costs nothing. Next we have is the Night Police B rank, pretty good. It's it's mostly it's a solid defensive nightmare frame. The attack version, you know, the what the, what the gun itself is okay, but it's a good defensive nightmare frame. Arguably, you can put it in the niche only because I saw certain builds where you have it with Senba or someone like Senba where you can defend and heal yourself instantly. But I think generally speaking, it's a good early Nightmare Frame to use when you want like a good defensive unit for, say, something like Senba or Suzaku. But yeah, you'll find definitely better units to replace it with. We've already gone through the Gekka and, of course, the Gurren Mark II. But yeah, that's my thoughts on this Nightmare Frame. Early on, I used it all the time, especially with like my cost producers and, and defensive nightmare fr uh, defensive pilots. But as I proceed in the game, I don't need as much as I used to. Now, we next we have the Lancelot Club A rank. I love this thing. It has its low cost, which is good, uh, decent attack, good defense, and it stuns and is special. Definitely like that ability. And again, any lance that doesn't cost much, I'll take because those are a dime a dozen, and they work really well with defensive nightmare frames. That are in front of them. That's my common placement that I like to do. Next we have is the Lancelot Flight Enabled Version. SS rank. This thing is ridiculous. Okay, let's start with the melee attack. The normal range of it is the same as the original Lancelot. But the special, my goodness. It covers like everything around you. It's, it's, oh my god. It's almost like you actually are flying with this thing as you take on Nightmare Frames. It's crazy the special the range they gave for its uh special and then the varus cannon i believe it has better range than the gloucester standard range by the way than, than dalton's gloucester and the special is exactly the same plus not does it cover you know long ways but it has a little spread at the side so it's really powerful this thing is like absurdly broken when i first looked at it i was like eh, you know but i realized no dude this thing is this is legitly a powerful nightmare frame. My goodness. I didn't realize it until I, until I actually started thinking about it. I wish I summoned it, but I got the Gwen instead. Which, I like the Gwen, but man, the Lancelot flying out version is, is broken. That's all I gotta say about that one. The next nightmare frame we had was the Lancelot. SS rank. Even now, I'd still put it there. The Varus Cannon, still one of the strongest ranged nightmare frame weapons in the game. 
The melee is also very solid, and there's even a shield weapon as well. This is a Swiss Army knife in the game. It has so many uses. It's so versatile with different weapons and configurations. It can work with so many different pilots. It's such a strong nightmare frame. I, I can't recommend it enough if you have it. Have a bunch of them. Man, the Varus Cannon is still broken, like I said, and you upgrade that thing to its like near max, and you're going to be wiping out basically everyone on the field. I'm, I, I'm not even joking. This thing is ridiculous. I don't care if the new Lancelot has somewhat better, maybe firepower in certain areas, but this thing is still really good. And I like how they didn't make the old Lancelot garbage with this new one by changing up the firepower of the Lancelot Flight Naval version. So that's Lancelot, really good. Next we have is the Mordred. SS rank, what do you think? You think it'd be any lower than that? This thing has a 3x3 three three standard range. The special is is okay. It's only a, I believe it's a four direction only. Like it's a, it only hits like right in front of it. There's no spread. It's okay. It's kind of like the the Gloucester, you know, Dolan's Gloucester. So not bad, but eh, not a fan of the special. But the normal attack is ridiculous. You cover so much ground. This is a nightmare frame with a float unit, so you can move it around too without having to redeploy it, which is great for healers and also again like uh, booster abilities with certain pilots. I, I mean, it's it's such a broken nightmare frame. The range alone does it for me, but then the attack power is pretty solid too. So overall, it's it's a really good nightmare frame. Next we have is the MR1 garbage uh, tier, unfortunately. It is a range nightmare frame. It was used in the episode stage four when they rescued Suzaku. It's only in this game because it was in the show, but it's not great. I believe it was free when I first got it. I don't know if it's still free when you play it now, but I didn't see it in the store, so I'm going to assume that's the case. Next we have is the Plumides. Solid. The Plumides is, is interesting to me because it has insanely powerful attack. I believe it's higher than the Gwaine, the Mordred, definitely these two, the uh, the Diesel and the Glaston Knight. So attack power is really good. And the range is not. It, it's a cross, basically. So it has, like, I believe it's two in front and then two to the side. So it's, it's okay. But the reason why I like it compared to something like the Gwaine is accessibility. You'll be summoning Dorothea a lot because she's rank three. And you'll get a lot of plummeties. And there are many times in the game where ranged nightmare frames that have float units are like all you need to use, or I should say required to use. And so in those cases, this night friend will come up a lot. And you'll be happy you had it. At least the special build on the Plumides actually has a standard range of a Sarlin, so that's not bad. And again, if you place this thing correctly, it can still be pretty useful. But I don't like the standard range in general. It's a cross. But it's like the only range nightmare frame we have that's easy to acquire that also has a float unit. So until we get something better, you're kind of stuck with the Plumides. Next we have is the Percival. Easy S rank, close to SS, honestly. This thing has the second highest attack of any Nightmare Frame in the game, talking melee-wise, of course. High defense, it's a lance, it was free to acquire. I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, the, the attack range, the special is also really good. This thing is extremely powerful. I even use it like with even like rank 2 million or lower units just because it's such a powerful Nightmare Frame and when you Upgrade enough. It's not that too. It's not that bad on the cost, but man, for a free nightmare frame, what a gift! This thing is an absolute monster. I absolutely love the Percival. Not a big fan of Bradley, though, unfortunately. Next we have is the Shen Hu, also S rank. And why I don't like the Shen Hu as a nightmare frame in the game, it's pretty powerful. It can attack multiple enemies at the same time, even though it has like one spot in front of it. So essentially, if a bunch come in front of you, you can attack multiple the, multiples of them. This is important because if you can't do that, they're going to go right past you. And then what was the point of that? The special is not terrible either, but I get only tax and iron frames that are uh, right in front of it. I don't know why they didn't get this thing a chest cannon like in the show. Maybe we'll get a better version of like that in the near future. The other thing I'll say about the, the Shen Hu is that the reason why it's in the S rank and the Gwen is not, not the Gwen, I'm sorry, the Galhead is not, is because the Shen Hu was free to acquire. It costs less to place. It costs less to upgrade. The damage output is comparable to a, to the Galahad. That's why it was on there. And I'm, I'm not sure if it's, it wasn't, it's not free to get now, but during the Chinese Federation event, it was free. And that's when I picked it up. 
So that's how I'm basing this. And if you say you just start playing the game for the first time, that event, of course, already ended. But when the game goes global, they're going to have it again, I would imagine. And when that occurs, you'll get it for free. And you'll be happy when you do because it's like the Galahad, but cheaper. Next, we have a Z Sugetsu. Easy, easy S rank. This Nightmare Frame, much like the Gurren Mark II and much like the Gekka, it has a really cool special ability where it does a fixed amount of damage. It has really good defense ability, really good attack ability. It, it works uh, attack ability, offensive power. That's a better word to use, attack ability. What does that even mean? It's got, like I said, good for defense, defensive pilots, good for attack, uh, annihilators, defensive players, uh, defensive pilots, sorry, knights, all that stuff. It's just really good, and plus, it was free. So how do you like that? Goes well, by the way, with the MC of the game. Really good nightmare frame. I've been very happy since I got it. I use it all the time in certain, in certain uh, deployments, so it's really good. Next we have is the Sutherland Custom SS rank. Easy SS rank. This thing's attack power is, I believe, the second highest. So we have, for a range nightmare frame, of course. So we have the Plumities, the Lancelot with the Varus, and then we have the Sutherland Custom. This thing was free, by the way, and not only was it free, but it came with both weapons unlocked, which is the Lance and the, of course, the, it's not really a Varus Cannon, but close enough. And, man, this thing is so powerful and really cool, too. Every unit, every team I have, I use at least, I only have one, but I use it in every single team. You can get more, too, if you want it. But, man, for the cost, when it first came out, it was completely free. It's a very powerful Nightmare Frame. I, I mean, wow. When they first released this thing, I was very impressed. They gave us something this OP, considering what else has been out there. I mean, this thing doesn't replace the normal Lancelot, but if you don't have a Lancelot Nightmare Frame, this is a good substitute. And if you do have the Lancelot, I would still use this in your team. One of the best in the game, for sure. And one of my favorites. Hands hands down, one of the best in the game. Next, we have the Redder Sarlin. And this is a solid A rank. I love this, this Nightmare Frame. I use it in basically all my teams because it has high standard attack, great range, and low cost. You can't really ask for more than that. Yes, the special itself is okay, like damage output-wise. But, again, low cost, high standard attack, and good range. That's all you have to know about this Nightmare Frame. Easy to upgrade to, not too expensive. Very good if you want to use it in, in, in certain situations where, like, let's say you want to put out Halloween Lelouch or a unit like that to cloak your units, but you don't want to, you know, pay so much cost with, like, a, a Gurren, not Gurren, a, a Mordred or, I don't know, a Borai Kai, whatever, a Zero Borai, rather. This thing is cheaper than those and gets the job done. Honestly, if you got a bunch of these, you could do a lot of damage. I absolutely love this Nightmare Frame. And I'll continue to use it from I'll continue to use it until they make something better. The melee version is not bad either. I don't tend to use it, but it's pretty good too. Next we have is the Sutherland, the standard one, not the purest, standard one. And it is garbage. Not only does it have the same, it's got maybe slightly better stats than the original Sutherland, slightly better, but it's paid only, which means you have to go into the store and get it. And no special. So why would you use this? Over the original Sutherland, which is easy to get, because let's be honest, summoning Jeremiah and Valette is super easy in this game. Summoning this character, uh, this time frame, is really hard. I think even Kyo comes with two, if I'm not mistaken. So why would you want this? I don't know why this exists in the game, other than the fact that it is a nightmare frame that was in the show. So therefore, I guess it must be in the game. But besides that, ugh, not good. Next, we have Toto's Gekka, and yeah, it's a win more. The problem with this Nightmare Frame is that in theory, you'd think it'd be great, but in actuality, it's just not. So the way it works is it, like the, the Gurren Mark II and the Sagetsu and the Gekka, it does fixed damage to two units in its range. The range is where it gets kind of strange. It's one in front and two to the side, which is like, okay, kind of works. I mean, the, the Gekka in the show, when, when Toto used it, he would swing around and hit a bunch of nightmare frames, so it should have some kind of swinging range. The problem with it, though, it just doesn't seem as good as you would think. So it's a win more in that regard, because you can get a lot done with our nightmare frames like the Sagetsu or the Gekka, or even the Club, honestly, if you want that type of thing. It's It's got good defense, it's got good attack, but I don't think it's worth investing into. They're just better options. And even if there aren't better options, is it worth spending the resource on this Nightmare Frame when if you get the Gurren, it's still better? 
So, you know, that's a problem with it too. It's it's not bad, but they're just better than your frames to use. So as a pain to say this, I just don't know why you'd want to use it. I'm glad it's in the game though, because I love the design of the Nightmare Frame itself, but in terms of actual usage, no, I would not recommend this Nightmare Frame. Next we have is the Tristan Easy SS Rank. I don't know what they were thinking when they made this Nightmare Frame. So at first when I played I was like, this seems kind of weak. But then I was like, wait a minute, that T-shape initial range of attack is very, very useful. There are so many applications where you'll be using it often because, again, if you think of the game like Tetris, you'll have lots of spots where you can make use of that, 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 that really unique range. And the special ability wipes out the same amount of people as the Gwen does, the same range. I think it's four by three, except it's a ground unit, which is so crazy. And more think about the, the standard range ability is that you can actually have the Tristan help out other Nightmare Frame units next to it fight against the enemies because he attacks both the one in front of him and the one next to him, which is really good. This Nightmare Frame is super powerful. I don't know what they were thinking when they made it, but yeah, the Tristan, the Tristan man is really good. I can't wait to see how they're going to make the divider even better. But yeah, this, this Nightmare Frame is so powerful. Was deceptively powerful, I should say, because when it first came out, people didn't know what to think of it. But man, it's really good. And last, and certainly not least, Zero's Borai S rank. Now, I don't use the Nightmare Frame that much, and I got a ton. Um, well, one account, I got one on another. And the thing about the Nightmare Frame is that, it's, in theory, it's very powerful. Good attack. The special is ridiculous. It does like 2.75 times the standard attack, plus a cloaked unit. So it's very good with, let's say, healers, or, of course, any Lelouch character, because they got a skill boost. But the problem with this Nightmare Frame, and why I don't use it that much, is that the, the cost of place... It's just so high, and the cost to upgrade is so high, and oftentimes I'd rather just use a Sarlin because it's cheaper and the standard damage is higher. Obviously, the Zero, zero Borai has better special ability. I won't even deny that, but I generally go to Sarlin because it's, it's just cheaper to place. And what you guys probably know or are going to find out at some point is that in every single battle, you often win or lose by not having enough cost to place a certain unit at a time that would have won you the battle. And so if you have a Nightmare Frame that costs less to play, that may not be good to say one that's better but costs more, it's still better to place that other Nightmare Frame, the weaker one, instead, because you'll save yourself extra cost to play something else. And that something else can often win you the game. So that's why I often prefer using a Sutherland over the Borai. But if we're just talking about just pure stats and pure ability, yeah, it's better than Sutherland. But oftentimes there's more to that that goes on in the battlefield. And that was my Nightmare Frame tier list. If you liked the video, please comment below. Let me know which of Nightmare Frames was in fact your favorite. If you want me to also do a pilot tier list just like this, let me know that in the comments as well. If you want a video where I do go over different pilots in the game, check this video right here where I review the New Year's Eve pilots.